Okay, straight to part two. Okay, so Keith, already lying. Um, so, yeah, didn't have the plans of your state. So I was like, okay then, give me some proof that this is public open space. I think I asked many times, many times. They send me out an ordinance plan. There, proof, it's public open space. It's a bunch of fucking lines. It was just a bunch of lines on, on paper, you know? It was like, you know, It's like a bunch of lines on, 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 on a paper, not drawn like that, but that, that's something I just don't, don't know. Bunch of lines. Now if you didn't live on the street, or the, on, on this estate, you might look uh, you might look at it and go, I don't know what it is. You know, what's, what's this square? What's that triangle? What's this square? What's this long thing? But if you live on the estate, especially if you live on the street, you will be able, be able to recognise the road, un, unlabeled. People recognise the houses and the land it's built on and side bits of land and stuff. You'll be able to recognise it and recognise the paths. Nothing was labelled. Nothing. Not even house numbers, right, actually. Possibly the house numbers. But there was nothing, nothing labelled on it. So I basically went, thank you. I've checked with a solicitor. Double checked. This proves absolutely nothing. It's a bunch of lines. Please give me proof. Prove to me where somewhere is written down to say that the side bit of land is public open space. They have, yet, as of yet, not been able to give me that. And this was three years ago. They have not provided any, any proof or any document whatsoever to say they have, to say that is public open space. Right, so, I... Unfortunately, um, as this went on um, to the planning inspectorate, I submitted my evidence as a interested party. Okay, and unfortunately, I lost. I lost, and they told me over the phone that my evidence was not considered because I was not the appealant. Even though I was the person carrying out the appeal, I wasn't the appealant. So only the appealant's evidence and the council's evidence was considered. And I lost. Which I think is very fucking bad. Very bad for the pla planning inspectorate. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so... That was ridiculous. So I basically lost. I was like, right, okay, what do I do now? Can I appeal that? And I'm like, no. Basically, you would have to go to high court and cost you loads of money. Um... Now, um, I'm not sure when it came, but they kept on, the council kept on saying, we advise you seek independent legal advice. So I sought independent legal advice uh, in the form of a uh, planning litigation barrister. Not a solicitor, a barrister, right? Cost me a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds for her time. And after, you know, like a, like a week or so, looking at all of the evidence and everything that I submitted, she backed me to a T. But she did say that, unfortunately, I found out a little bit late. And really, I should have known this a while earlier. And I probably would have been successful. Now, I lost my appeal. I say it wasn't my appeal, really. I lost the appeal. <laughs> or the, the previous owners lost the appeal. But I had to carry out. So I had to take down the fence. Because quite simply, the council was saying they were going to take me to court. And where the merits of the case wouldn't be discussed. Only a uh, question is, why haven't you carried out the enforcement? And if there wasn't a good reason, like ill health or, or I'm not in the country or something daft like that. If there wasn't a good enough reason, and um, that basically I could hit be hit with an unlimited fine. They could literally take my house from me. Unlimited fine. Right? For not carry out the enforcement. So I had to carry out the enforcement. I tried and tried and tried. I even sent an email to the councillors of Gated Council. Okay? Inviting them to come over and watch me a few weeks before Christmas. There was a few, I think it was a week before Christmas, maybe two. 
so they could look in my child's eyes, my child's children's eyes, and see the upset eyes of my kids as I'm taking down their fence, okay, over a bit of land which they played on, played games on. I invited them to come over and watch. If they think they're so high and mighty, yeah, something just flew into my friggin' ear. Gone. Um, yeah, so if they were so high and mighty, come. And if you're so confident, look at my kids' eyes. And you, and you're, and if you think you're so right, come here and watch. Not a single soul turned up. Of course they didn't. At the same time, the Evening Chronicle, I went to the Evening Chronicle, right, about this, well, about the same time, um, ran a story and got it completely wrong. They fucked it up. They corrected it a little bit online, apparently. Um, there's so, some things they said. Um, but but put, in, put in, like, I claim this, I claim that. And I'm like, I can fucking show you the proof, what they said, okay? But they're like, oh, I claim this. Anyway, they printed a story saying that I wanted to build a fence. Or I bought land and I wanted to build a fence. Or I wanted to build a fence and uh, they said no. So I bought the land and then built the fence. Not sure which order they put it. But they basically done it like, I wanted to build a fence. I asked. I got told no, I built it anyway, when the council found out and hit me with an enforcement, I was quite upset, and uh, fought it, and thought it was unfair how they were treating me, and um, uh, they shouldn't be treating me because uh, like this, because I am disabled, and I am a veteran of the armed forces, um, and it made my children upset, something on the lines of that. Makes me sound like a right dick. Does. Makes me sound like a right dick. As I've said in part one. You'll understand how that story is bullshit. Because I didn't build the fence. I didn't build. A f I bought the land with the fence already fucking round it. I spent 24 hours commenting on their website. Or on Facebook. Right. And messages that were sent to me. Horrific messages from some people. I spent 24 hours arguing, telling people the truth. They're like, oh, you're a dick. You're a disgrace to the uniform. Can't believe you went on. You're absolute prick. You know, work. messages like that. And I went, look, they screwed up the story. I never built the fence. I didn't. If you read that story and you're local, and you read that story, you're probably thinking... You might recognise me by the photo that was uh, that was put on. You might recognise me and go, oh, fucking hell, I actually do remember that. It did make him sound like a right prick. I never built the fucking fence. Okay, and as, as, I, as I went, uh, as I've already said, that they asked for permission. They said, it's general permit development, you can do it, and you don't need plan permission. Right, anyway, so I got this um, printed, and I, I, uh, I, I spent 24 hours defending myself, and... Everybody but one. I was always going to be one. One person just wouldn't change their mind. Well, well, you know, tough luck. You'll have to take down the fence. It shouldn't, shouldn't be a fence around it. But every everybody, every single person other than that one person, were like, oh yeah, I see your point. That's not right. Keep fighting this. Like I never built a fence. I had permission. You know. <laughs> anyway, um, I wish. Uh, the Evening Chronicle would actually do another story and do actually get it get it right. I'll show them the evidence. I'll show them the proof of all of this, so they can get it get it here. But hopefully, this this they'll watch this and get the facts from it. And everything I I state will it will be facts. No, no ifs or buts. Anyway, I'm gonna go part part three.